I'm going to record and share my screen. Uh, if you guys have looked at the modules, I've changed them again, of course. Um, so that pushed your test back a little bit. I'm sure you're real upset about that, but um, I'm not going to, there's no way I can finish 1.3 today. So we're going to finish it up tomorrow. And if you're okay with it, I'm going to do quite a bit today. Not, not terrible, um, but quite a bit today. And then hopefully tomorrow I won't have as much for you to do. So I will go ahead and open up everything for this week. And then, like I said, um, after I finish this one, and then you guys can get started on the next homework and then we'll finish it up by tomorrow. So you might have a little extra due today, but it's not, it's not due today, if that makes sense, but you can get more of it done. So you have less to do tomorrow before the weekend. All right. So we're starting on travel times to work again. Stuff in order right here. And the first thing that we're going to do is figure out your five number summary. And we're going to do that from just looking at this. We're not going to use our calculator. We can, but we're not going to. So the first thing that you want to do is find the median. So I'm going to mark them off with my highlighter so we can still see them. So five and 60, 10 and 40, 10 and 40, 10 and 30. 12 and 30, 15 and 25, that makes that 20 our median. Okay. You already know the minimum and the maximum. The minimum is the five, the maximum is the 60. So then we talked a little bit about Q1 and Q3 yesterday, but we didn't do any work with it. Q1 is the minimum, I'm sorry, the median of the minimum values. So we're going to take these yellow highlighted numbers on this side. And we're going to do the same thing that we just did. So this time I'll do it in a different color. I'll do green. So 5 and 15 get marked out. 10 and 12 get marked out. When you have two numbers, remember you average them together. Even though these are both the same, I'm going to write it down to get your Q1 at 10. Okay, same thing on the other side. We're going to mark out 25 and 60, 30 and 40. Now we end up with two numbers in the middle, so we're going to average those. 30 plus 40 is 70 divided by 2 is 35. Any questions on how we find Q1 and Q3? They're really, really simple. And again, your calculator will do it for you. I just want to show you by hand. If we have a huge set of data, I definitely do not want you to do it by hand. To find the IQR, we talked about this yesterday, was Q3 minus Q1. It has to be that way so that your range, your interquartile range is positive. So you want the highest minus the lowest to make it positive. So we do 35 minus 10, which gives us 25. The quartiles and the interquartile range are resistant. We talked about that yesterday. Because they are not affected by a few extreme observations. For example, Q3 would still be 35. So this would still be 35. And the IQR would still be 25 if the maximum were 600 rather than 60. So if I change this to 600, it doesn't change anything. I'd still be marking it out. It doesn't affect these two numbers right here, okay? So finding and interpreting the IQR, an early example, we looked at data on travel times to work for 20 randomly selected New Yorkers. Here's that data again. It says find and interpret the IQR. So on this one, I wanna do this one in our calculator and this, when we do calculator work, it's going to take extra time. So that's why I said, I know I'm not going to get done with one three today. So I readjusted for that and that's perfectly fine. Uh, we're going to go into stat and edit and I have stuff in here. So I'm going to clear it out. I don't delete it. I clear it. And then I'm going to put all these values into L1, only into L1. So I'm going to take a minute to type those in. If you have your calculator, please do this. If you were sitting in the classroom, I'd make you do it. And 
and I didn't cover any up. So that's all there is. The 20 and the 45 are the last ones. So all we did again was go into stat and we're going to edit L1. Everything goes into L1. Then you go back to stat, you go over to calc, and you're picking one bar stats. So again, stat, calc, and one bar stats is the first one. Keep it in enter, none of that matters right now. And if you scroll down, you'll get your five number summary. So your minimum is at five. Your Q1 should be at 15. Your median is 22.5. Your Q3 is 42.5. And your max is 85. The only thing your calculator does not do for you is your IQR but that's just subtraction, so you should be okay. So to find our IQR, we do Q3 minus Q1. Q3 was 42.5. Q1 was 15, making my IQR 27.5. Okay, now here's the thing that everybody forgets. On this first test, you will be so mad at yourself if you forget this. It said find it. We did that part, but then it gives this. Guys, I'm telling you, you'll find the standard deviation and you'll forget to interpret it. You'll find the mean and forget to interpret it. And that takes points off. So we wanna make sure that we're actually doing all the work that it asks us to do. So here's how you interpret it. Remember that I told you in stats, you write it a specific way and you continue to write it that way in context of your problem. So on this one, Here's your interpretation. The IQR is 27.5, which is the range of the middle half of data of New York travel times. All right, so stay here for a minute. Give you a chance to write it down. Y'all yell at me if you need anything. So when I tell you to interpret the IQR, this 27.5 will change and the context of the problem will change. Everything else is written exactly the same. Okay, so if I ask you to interpret the IQR and it's 50, you say the IQR is 50, which is the range of the middle half of the data and then of whatever I told you the data set was. So I want somebody to interpret this IQR from the time before that. The IQR is 25, which is the range of the middle half of the data of North Carolina travel times to work. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. So again, just make sure it's in context of the problem. All right, next page, identifying outliers. So in addition to serving as a measure of spread, the interquartile range, which is called the IQR, is used as part of the rule of thumb for identifying outliers. And again, you should have done this in math one, but it's okay if you didn't. I don't ever hardly get to it when I'm teaching it, so it's okay. So the, uh, the 1.5 IQR rule for outliers states that a data observation
is considered an outlier if above or below one point five times IQR. And we're gonna do some of this, so don't don't worry if you don't remember how to do it. We'll be okay. So now we want to see if the 1.5 IQR rule identifies any outliers for the New York travel time data. That was the one that we just did and put in our calculator. In the previous example, we found that Q1 was 15, Q3 was 42.5 and IQR was 27.5. Okay, so that's just reiterating what we just talked about. For these data, the 1.5 times IQR is 1.5 times our IQR is 27.5, which is 41.25. All right, so any values not falling between, remember it said lower than Q1, so Q1 minus 41.25 or above, so Q3 plus 41.25. If it's not above or below, it is not an outlier. So our Q1 was 15 minus 41.25 which is negative 26.25. We did not have any values less than negative 26. So there was no negative travel time. So there are no low outliers. Okay, so no low outliers. And if you need to put that on there, no travel time below zero, no travel time below negative 26.25. Then your Q3 was 42.5. We're gonna add that to 41.25. And we get 83.75. Let me take you back real quick. I'll move it again in a minute. Here's our data set that we're looking at. Is there any number above 83.75? Yeah. Yeah. It is. 85 is the only one. There could be multiple, but in this data set, they're not. So that means that 85 is an outlier. So we don't have to say it's a possible outlier anymore. It is one. has to be 1.5 away from one of the quartiles. Uh, 1.5 times the interquartile range. So this number comes from yeah. the one, yeah. Yep. All right, so any values not falling between those are flagged as outliers. Look again at the stamp plot. The only outlier is the longest travel time which is 85 minutes. The 1.5 times IQR rule suggests that the three next longest travel times are just part of the long right tail of this skewed distribution. Yeah. 
All right. So then the next one says determine if the 60 is an outlier because we thought it was. We said it could be a possible outlier. So we're going to check out if it is. So the first thing you need to do is find Q1 and Q3. What was Q1 and Q3? This is a 15 minutes. Uh, I'm sorry, the 15 North Carolina. What was our Q1 and our Q3? 10 and 35. Okay. Is everybody good with that? That was from the very first one. Q1 is 10. Q3 was 35. Just to go back so you know where I'm getting it from. The very first page we did, Q1 was 10, and then Q3 was 35. Okay. The IQR from that same page was 25. You're going to do the 1.5 times IQR rule. What is 1.5 times 25? 37.5. It has to be that much below Q1 to be an outlier and that much above Q3 to be an outlier. Q1 was 10, which gives us a negative 27.5. Are there any low outliers? No. No, the lowest we have is five. There's no negatives. So none on the low end. And then we have 35 plus 37.5, which gives us 72.5. Did we have any values higher than 72? No. So what does that mean about this data set? There's no outlier. Good. There are no outliers in this set of data. Okay. Any questions? Everybody good? All right. Whenever you find outliers in data, try to find an explanation for them. Sometimes the explanation is as simple as a typing error, like typing 10.1 as 101. Sometimes a measuring device broke down or someone gave a silly response, like the student in a class survey who claimed to study 30,000 minutes per night. In all these cases, you can simply remove the outlier from your data. When outliers are real data, like the long travel times of some New York workers, you should choose the measure of center and spread that are not greatly affected by the outliers. Okay, so which center and spread are not affected by outliers? which center is not affected by outliers? Median. The median. And what did I tell you went with the median? It's like the standard deviation or whatever. Uh, that's for mean. So anytime oh. you do mean, then you're going to do standard deviation. If you didn't pick it up, anytime you do median, you're going to do IQR. Okay. Median. We've done standard deviation. No, we have not. We will. All right. Five number summary. Uh, wait a minute. Let's go over something real fast. If the data is skewed, what do I use for center? Median. And I just told you median and range or IQR. They're both the same. Okay. I mean, they're not the same number, but they're the same concept. What if it's symmetric? What do we use? For our center and our spread, sorry. Mean. Mean and? Standard deviation. Yeah, and we'll get to that soon. So I'm just going to keep writing it so that it's stuck in your head by the time we get there. All right. So the smallest and largest observations tell us a little about the distribution as a whole, but they give information about the tails 
of the distribution that is missing if we know only the median and the quartiles? To get a quick summary of both center and spread. Use all five numbers. So I showed you the box plot yesterday at the very end. These five numbers divide each distribution roughly into quarters. That's why they're called quartiles. About 25% of the data falls between the men and Q1, about 25% between Q1 and the median, about 25% between the median and Q3, and about 25% between Q3 and the maximum. And again, I drew that box plot for you yesterday at the bottom of your, your notes. So Q1, I'm sorry, this is men, Q1, median, Q3, max. So 25% on this whisker, 25% in this half of the box, 25 in that half, and 25 in that half. Okay, so again, that's what I drew yesterday. The five number summary of the distribution leads to a new graph, which is the box plot that I just showed you. Sometimes called a box and whisker plot. All right, so how do you make a box and whisker plot? The first thing is find the five number summary. You're gonna plot that on a number line. Make a box between Q1, sorry, and Q3. And then make whiskers from the men to Q1 and Q3 to the max. And we're about to make a dot plot, I mean a box plot, so no worries, I'll teach you how to do it. So this is all on this page. We're going to the next one. Okay. Everybody got it? Yes or no? All right. I need you to put this data, I don't want you to, I don't want you to have to do it by hand. So put this data into your calculator and please do it because I'm not going to do it for you and you're going to tell me what you have for the five number summary. Okay. So I need to know the five number summary. If you're not working on this, which you should be, but if you're not, what's your minimum value in this data set? You can do the min and max without doing any work. 
is 16. Somebody else, tell me what your maximum is. 73. Mm -hmm. Anybody that's done the work have Q1, median, and Q3? How do you get to it again? You go into stat and you put it all in L1. Then you go back to stat, calc, one var stats. Okay. Anybody got them yet? Is 25.5. Perfect. If you didn't get that, you probably put a value in incorrectly. It's okay. Median? 34. 34. Q3? 45. 45. All right, so here's how we make a box plot. We draw a number line. Our number line has to go from our minimum is 16, our max is 73, so I did 10 to 80. You can put your little marks for your fives in between if you'd like. That's perfectly fine. You don't have to. It may help you when it's drawing though. All right, so I put all the dots above the number line. So I start with all of those. Minimum is 16. So it's gonna be like right here. And then 25.5 for Q1, which would be like right there. 34. 45 and then 73. So again, to make this, plot your points. So that's your points plot. The middle is going to be a box and then you put a vertical line where the median is and then you just make your whiskers. And that's it. We will use box plots a lot because they're really easy to tell the shape center spread outliers, okay? So look at this one. Look where the box is. Where is your data? Is your data on the low end or is it on the high end? Low. Low. Low, the low numbers, right? So this is going to be like your tail. This is going to be your high point. So wherever that box is, it's skewed opposite. So this box is the data that's on the right. That means the tail is on the, I'm sorry, the box is on the left. That means the tail is on the right, okay? So again, if it's like this, this is the same thing as having like this data. If the box is in the middle, that's symmetric. If the box is on the other end, that's like this. Does everybody understand that? So what, yeah. what shape is this one? And I have about 10 minutes left. When this is done, I'm going to be done, okay? Right. So I'd like left. to put this page in this skewed. one. Skewed what? Left. Where's the tail? Oh, right. Oh, it's skewed right. right. Skewed right. right. We'll get it where you'll be right at it, okay? So it's just been a, a couple days. All right, the center. What's the only center that we know? Since it's skewed, we're going to use median. And where's your median? What do we say? 34. 34. Our spread, that's the range. We're going to use the range. We can use the IQR as well. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to do both of them. What's your range? 16 to 73. Your IQR would be Q3 minus Q1. We're not going to do it. You can use median and range. I would leave it at that to make it easy. And then did we have any outliers on this? Did you guys do your, um, your coordinates? I, don't, I mean, not your coordinates, but your list. Let me show you. I should have been putting them in too. 
All right, 16, 25, 24, 19, 33, 25, 34, 46, 37, 33, 42, 40, 37, 34, 49, 73, 46, 45, 45, 46, 28. All right, that is 20 of them. So if we do our second y equals and we turn our plots on, this is really good about this. Remember I told you we're gonna use one of the two. We're always gonna use the one with the dots because that'll show us if there are any outliers. And then I'm gonna zoom nine and I might have something else in here and I apologize, that's probably what it is. Yep, okay, zoom nine. Do you guys see any little extra dots on here at all? No. no. So if you don't see the extra dots, you know that it's not an outlier. If I went back in, just to throw this out there, and I put in, what was our biggest one, 73? Let's say I put in 100. Let's see if that works. See how I put that dot in? That 100 would have been an outlier. So if I trace this, just like I showed you yesterday, I can trace, it'll give me all those numbers. So I don't ever have to make it by hand. So minimum, Q1, median, Q3, maximum, da -da, outlier, outlier at 100. Okay, so did this one have any outliers? No. No outliers. So you don't even have to do, sorry, you don't have to do the 1.5 times whatever. Okay, you can just plot it and see, and that's good. All right. So check your understanding, this is the last page that we're gonna do. It says find the five number summary for these data by hand, it's not very hard. We're gonna put them in order. What's the smallest one? 290. Okay, what's the next one? 301. I need somebody other than Haley. 290, 301. 305. Thank you, somebody else? 307. And there are two of those. Oh, sorry. 310, 324, and 345. Okay. Find the median. That's the first thing you do. Find the median. And we have two numbers. We could average them together, but we don't have to because they're the same. Okay. Is everybody good? We're gonna split it because it's two numbers in the middle. Q1, mark them out. We have these two left. What's in between 301 and 305? Three oh three. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do the work if you can tell. This one's easy. What is your minimum? Come on, guys. I'm almost done. 290. Your Q3, we're going to do the same thing. Mark out. We get these two numbers. How do I figure out what it is? You add them together and divide it. 310 plus 324 divided by 2. Uh, 317. 317. And then what's your max? 345. Thank you. All right. Calculate the IQR, interpret its value in context. So the IQR is Q3 minus Q1. Q3 was 317. Q1 was 303 which gives us 14. 14. Remember, 14 is the range. This is how we interpret it. Interpret, interpret. Is the range of the middle half. Of the data. Sorry. Of data. In context, the problem, what we're doing. Dallas Cowboys offensive lineman. That what's that number though? The weights. Yeah, of weight. 
of O-line on 2011 Dallas Cowboys. So be specific, just like you would any other time. Be specific. All right, how do we determine if they're outliers? We do 1.5 rule. So 1.5, your IQR was 14, which gives us 20. So we do Q1 minus 21 and Q3 plus 21. Q1 is 303, minus 21 is 282. Q3 was 317, plus 21 is 338. Were there values less than 282? No. No. No, and if you look on our list, 290 was the lowest, so no low. Are there any high? Was there anything higher than 338? Yeah. What was it? 345. There you go. And then it says draw a box plot. I have about two minutes left. I'm gonna get this in here. 290. I did it by 10s, 300, 310, 320, 330. 340 and 350. And then remember, we're just plotting those numbers. So 290, we had 303, like this. We had 307, be really close to it. We had 317, and then we had 345. But I want to hold off for a minute on making my box plot because what did we what did we know? 345 was a what? Outlier. So outlier. we can leave it there. So if 345 was an outlier, what's my new max if I throw it out? 338. Not 338, but oh 324. So then this will be your modified box plot. So again, when you have an outlier, take it out and then make it that. Uh, that's all that we were supposed to do. So you're good. Don't go ahead to uh, tomorrow's. We'll finish up these notes tomorrow and I'll give you time to do your work because I think it's quite a bit. Okay. It may not so, be. So do we have homework tonight? Yes. Okay. I think I opened it yesterday so you could start if you wanted to. Is it going to be modified or should it cover everything that it we've done? For, this is where I wanted to stop yesterday. This is okay. what I to get to yesterday. So then tomorrow we'll get the rest. All right, and it shouldn't take long. Everybody good? I have a question. Okay, it might kick us out. All right, and so I'm 84 in the homework, so I'll go ahead and come back in. That's a good idea. I'm gonna stop this recording, and then if you need me, come back in.